I just got my period today, which is great because it was a little bit late, which is always fun. And I wanted to record this experience because this is my first time having no birth control and getting my period since I was like 18. And I did just get off my IUD, which was a non-hormonal IUD. So it's not gonna be that big of a difference, I'm thinking. I think the biggest change I would see was when I got off my hormonal birth control and went to my non-hormonal IUD, but we'll see. This is why I'm doing this. Uh, but it is the first day of my period, and what that means is technically it's the start of a new hormone cycle. I know at least that I thought and used to think that having my period was the end of my hormone cycle, but it really is the beginning. It's when your uterine lining is shed, estrogen and progesterone are at its lowest, and serotonin also drops, which is why you might feel some of those PMS symptoms, but it's making way for the new hormone cycle. And this time around, I did know that it was coming, and I really only knew that because it was just late, and I noticed after a while, I was like, why haven't I got my period? I feel like I've been very bloated recently, and I'm not sure if that's just because I was getting my period. I think it's been... I honestly don't know what it's from. <laughs> but I just have been very bloated, more than usual than I would if I was just getting my period. And I also usually get, like, some cramps before I get my period, but this month I didn't really notice anything. I was honestly surprised to see that I had started my period. Um, I mean, I knew it was coming, but wasn't sure when. And I didn't notice any mood swings. Maybe I was a little bit crankier than I would have been over the past couple days, but really nothing super crazy. I feel like growing up, I was told or people talk about, and, and I feel like this is also portrayed in the media and in movies and stuff, that women have really intense PMS symptoms. And I'm not saying that women don't have those symptoms, but the portrayal of it and how often people talk about it and use it as just like a cover word, like PMS, like I'm PMSing, um, makes you feel like it's normal, even though it's not. Uh, women really should be going through their periods with minimal to no pain and I know that I can get back and I can get to that point with the right lifestyle choices but there really shouldn't be a lot of symptoms associated with your period and I know that there's been times where I feel like I've had to take Advil or I have to cancel plans on what I'm doing because my period pains are so bad but that definitely isn't normal so I'm trying to get back to a point where my hormones are aligned so that that those types of symptoms don't happen. So this period was pretty good though. I, I really didn't have a ton of symptoms around it. And when I did get my period today, I did feel almost like, oh, like a relief. Not like that I was anxious about it, but more so that I could just kind of feel that my body is relieved. Does that make sense? That my period is flowing. Like, ah. <sighs> Like it's finally like it's coming, which again, not anxiety or like worried. It was more like my body being happy that the blood is flowing. Like that's what it's supposed to be doing. But I'm going to go buy some feminine products now at the store since I'm out. And the only tampons I have right now, I'll actually go and get them because they're so sad. I bought these on accident. They're really weird looking. They look like this, and the reason why I bought them, I was like, oh, like organic cotton tampons, totally chlorine-free, amazing. Okay, so I then, like, I actually opened them. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm going to try to open it. You literally, see, I can't even get it right now. Just peel this little thing off, and then the plastic comes off. And you're just supposed to, are you kidding me? This makes me feel, and I know like it's probably better for the environment because there's not like all the cardboard around it and stuff that you just end up throwing away. But I, there's just something that grosses me out about thinking about my hands that, maybe I just need to like wash my hands before I do this. But my hands that have been like on my phone, my computer, or just like not super clean, just putting this up there. It just, it doesn't sit right with me. I know that this brand makes other kinds of regular applicators too, but this is just not it. I have to go to the store.
though, I did just get back from the store. And as you saw, I did buy pads instead of tampons. And I'm just gonna come out and say it, that pads are just better than tampons. Anyone who says differently, I think is lying because there's just no way that tampons are more comfortable than pads. And I, I mean, that's just what I value the most comfort, but pads are so much more comfortable. Unless you're working out or don't want anything to be shown or anything like that, that there's just no other reason why tampons would be better. So I did get pads and I did get that same brand uh, that I was looking at earlier with the weird tampons. This brand is really good. I really felt like throwing money on the ground today because these are not only plastic free, but they are perfume free, organic cotton, totally chlorine free, compostable, sustainable, blah, 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 which is great. And I do love to see it, but I do not think that you have to spend this much on tampons and pads because uh, these were like $7 for 14 pads. <laughs> but the two things that I do look for when I am buying tampons and pads is that one, it is perfume free and two, that it's chlorine free. Why would there be perfume and, and or chlorine in your pads and tampons? I could not tell you. These are products that are going in like a very sensitive area of your body, especially when you're having a per your period, it baffles me. The only conclusion that I've come to for at least the scent is that when tampons and pads are being made and you know men are running these companies, they don't know what's good for women or, for, or not. Back then, they were like, you know, it would be good. Let's put a scent in there. It's a little bit smelly sometimes. Let's really just mask that. Let's keep things clean and fresh for us. And I don't know if that's true or not. I think I just kind of made it up in my head, but that feels like the only logical conclusion. So don't correct me if I'm wrong. That's just what I'm going to continue to go with. <laughs> uh, but I did get pads and I do like this brand. So I'm excited about this and keep you posted. Okay, it is now a couple days later. I wanted to check in because although I haven't still been feeling any crazy symptoms, which is good, I was feeling pretty bloated this week and I also was having some cramps two nights ago when I did have plans to go out to dinner and um, did would have probably not have done that if I'd known how I was going to feel the same day, but it ended up being totally fine. I did notice that my period wasn't any heavier then normally it's definitely heavier than it was when I was on the pill, but nothing out of the ordinary since I had been on the copper IUD. But I did also just wanna talk about your menstruation in general and like what this does for your body since this technically is a part of the follicular phase and menstruation doesn't really have its own name as a part of your cycle. It is a part of the follicular phase because as I was mentioning, when progesterone and estrogen drop, your brain is like, okay, what's going on? What's happening? We need these hormones. We need to get ready to have a baby because it's, you know, the start of your new hormone cycle and part of our hormone cycle is prepping to possibly have a child. So our brain, which more specifically our follicle, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, tells our ovaries to get a follicle ready and starts making some estrogen. So as the follicle stimulating hormone is rising, so is our estrogen, which kind of really takes us into the follicular phase when you feel fantastic and all of that. So I'm still probably, I'm still in the follicular phase, but in the beginning part of it. So I'm not feeling glowing and amazing and awesome yet. I feel pretty normal, but really haven't had that crazy of symptoms. And I've been thinking a lot about how I really should be paying attention to the type of exercise that I'm doing during the different phases of my period really never have I paid attention to changing up my workout routine to accommodate for my cycle and like the different stages of my cycle. I recently had to stop working out like I usually do because I pulled a muscle in my leg. So I've been going to physical therapy, which has forced me to be, to change up my workout routine. So I do walk a lot more now instead of maybe more high intensity type workouts. And this period I was, this is maybe like since I started physical therapy, I've been doing it for like a month or so. So this was like the second period I was able to just walk and stretch and do a lot of easy movements during your period, which I know could be really difficult sometimes if you are having really bad cramps or you're just not feeling well or you're not in the best mood, but it really does help with your period to alleviate pain, even though that sounds uh, 
counterintuitive, just light walking, easy moving. It helps with the discomfort and it really does help your mood, especially if it's like a nice walk. It is like 30 degrees outside, so it was a little bit difficult to get myself to actually go outside and walk this morning, but I did do it and it did make me feel good. I know that also heat obviously helps with cramps, but I've also used essential oils to help with my cramps. I wish I had some, I'm out right now, but peppermint, if you put like a little bit in between your fingers and then on your forehead, is so nice. This also helps with headaches, but I also feel like it helps when I breathe it in, put it on my face with uh, any discomfort that I'm feeling. I also know that sex is helpful during your period to relieve discomfort, which again, sounds very counterintuitive, but it is supposed to help with cramping and discomfort. Uh, I mean, you like have to have an orgasm though. Like you can't just be having like mediocre sex. So make sure to <laughs> make sure to get to that point. Otherwise it's not as helpful. And obviously just sleeping and getting a good night's sleep and being gentle on yourself is something that I always try to remember during my period. The being gentle on yourself is very hard because I feel like for a while I was thinking, okay, like just because I have my period doesn't mean that I'm going to stop what I'm doing or cancel my plans or change my whole workout routine, but I really should be. I'm not sure why I'm not listening to my body. And it, when it goes through these ups and downs, uh, if I wanna support my body and do the best thing for it, I should be able to be gentle on myself and take some time and I don't know, maybe just relax for a second. So, I've been trying to just be more mindful of that during this period, especially when I'm not on any type of birth control that may have made this process a little bit easier for me in the past. So trying to be gentle on myself, still wearing those pads I bought, um, and hopefully this will be over soon. I think I have a couple more days. Things are definitely not getting heavier at this point. They're getting lighter, which is obviously ideal. So yeah, I'll check back in. My period ended a couple of days ago, so that was officially my first period without birth control done. It's actually pretty seamless, I would say. Um, it was only like five days, which is pretty short for me, and I'm wondering if I'm going to see some fluctuation as I like, am a couple months off it. Maybe the first one is just a fun little present for getting off birth control and it's really smooth, or maybe that was just my experience, but I am excited to see how the next couple months go because that really wasn't bad at all and i don't really want to hear any word about the lizard decorations in this bathroom i am currently at my parents house for the holiday and that on top of the lighting being fluorescent like science classroom fluorescent it's not the best recipe <laughs> but all in all really didn't go as bad as I thought it was going to be and I am excited to see how the next couple of months go if this continues or if um it will get any worse so yeah I'm going to end this video here thanks for watching